Now you're going to be creating a cladogram in class, so hopefully this will be helpful for you to indicate what it should generally look like. So um, I'm clade here, looking at what an example of one is and what an example of one is here, and both ends, in the middle it's not. Basically you have all these little sections here, this isn't a complete area. Notice here this is a complete kind of grouping, same as this, a complete grouping. This one contains a split here, a divergent evolution, but it only contains part of that, so that's why it's not considered um, a full classification set. So how things may look, how to build a family tree. Uh, taxonomy also enables us to glimpse the evolutionary history of life on Earth. Uh, phylogeny is the evolutionary history of an organism and its relationship to other species. The reconstruction and study of these um, phylogenic trees is also called systematics. We're going to be looking only at one particular species and how we look at um, separating that out. We use some examples here of the divergent evolution and how in certain environments and predators may have impacted changes that occur over time. So a common ancestor, this is an important term, it's any organism that two or more descendants have in common. So I'm going to tell you what the common ancestor is, and through your cutouts you're going to have to determine what is more closely related to that common ancestor and what is more distantly related to that ancestor. So the example here of the wolf and all the dog species that have derived from that, this is all of the dogs have this one single common ancestor. Some might be related closer to this than others, but they all in some way distantly or closely relate to the common ancestor. So how to build this family tree? This um, clade here is a group of organisms related by a descent. Um, cladistics is the construction of phylogeny based on similarities derived from common from a common ancestor. Examination of these characteristics allows the construction and branching of a cladogram. So this is what we'll be doing. Again, these two examples at the bottom here don't really fit the category. Both of these do. It can be a single lineage or it can be the complete um, common ancestor with the branch here. Here, you can see here, within this box, there is no necessary common ancestor. The common ancestor exists outside the box. Same here, this does not include all the individuals that fall under this particular common ancestor. That's part of the reason why these don't um, classify. Over here, we would see the same one that's on the title slide, and again, the two end ones are um, all-inclusive, and the one in the middle is not. So we get to the terms called in-groups and out-groups, out and these cladograms are not true family trees. So it's important to make that separation or that distinction between the two. They convey comparative relationship information, and each cladogram contains an out-group to which the in-group is compared. So this would be our in-group. These will all be closely related. And here's our out-group, separated out and used to compare to this in-group. They may have some similar some similar properties because they all share the same common ancestor, but these are grouped as the in-group. These are probably more closely related than section A here, considered the out-group. Modern method attempts to assign extra weight to the evolutionary significance of key characteristics. We call this weighting characteristics. So instead of just kind of organizing, we kind of give weight to certain developments that may be more complex that occurred. Uh, phylogenies are constructed based on large amounts of information about an organism gathered, or gathered over years. To construct their trees, traditional taxonomists use both ancestral and derived characteristics. Um, Cladus only use the derived characteristics. So again, that traditional versus um, the cl classification versus the cladogram, we see here we're giving a little bit more weight to certain um, ways to divide certain things. Here we see two different ways of basically separating out um, things, and the cladogram here is using a little bit more specifics to divide that. Uh, so which approach is better? The traditional is when there's a lot of information available to guide character weighting, and the cladistics is used when little information about how a character affects the life of the organism is used. So in class you're just going to get pictures, so therefore we can't really perform the traditional taxonomy. We don't have enough information, we don't know exactly the years or the duration of the species diversities, so that's how we're going to develop this. Uh, cladistics is what we're going to use, mainly based on phenotypic features. So two ways to classify terrestrial uh, vertebrates here. Notice here birds have their own class, and over here birds are lumped with reptiles. So the traditional 
uh, phylogeny and taxonomic classification. If you remember, flipping back, that's when a lot of information is used. So we have a lot of information we're able to separate out birds into their own separate category. However, we're just kind of looking at comparative features. They get kind of lumped into more with reptiles uh, than separate out into their own specific um, class here. So this is just important to keep in mind the limitations of how we organize things. It's simply based on the information we're able to collect and use.